Hey, good afternoon, guys. Uh, Jason here coming at you from the farm. Uh, we're in Oxford, Ohio, uh, right in the heart of maple syrup season here. We got our evaporator pan going here behind me, and uh, we've got our reverse osmosis uh, system set up down there. Uh, we did a video on this a while back. Uh, actually, it was last year we put this system together, the reverse osmosis. Um, I'll link to that video at the end of this one. Uh, it details that entire DIY build uh, on maple syrup reverse osmosis. I will say this, this is the second season that we've used it and it is more than worth it. If you have, if you're doing more than, I'm gonna say, you know, 15, 20 taps, uh, you, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna check that out. We've had several people have built the system, have, have had success with it. So I, I did a video, went over the build, links to all the parts in the description of that video. I'll link that at the end here, but I wanted to go over today uh, just a few of the upgrades that we've made uh, this year. Very inexpensive, simple upgrades that we've made to the, the RO system. Uh, just makes things a lot easier. And then also I've had a few common questions that I, I just wanna uh, go over real quick here. And uh, we got a, got a beautiful day here uh, on the farm. We're mid fifties. And I would say our, our syrup season here in Southwest Ohio, I would say we're gonna peak uh, probably probably tomorrow, I would say. Uh, supposed to have another day uh, below freezing tonight and another day uh, almost 60 degrees and sunny tomorrow. So I'd say that'll be our peak. Uh, let's get into this RO, some of these questions and upgrades. Okay, so you can see we got everything going here. Um, we've got our boil, we're just above 200. Uh, that's gonna need a little attention here. That needs to be a little bit higher on that temperature. And the RO, the RO's cranking here, you can see just under 100 PSI. And uh, we got the uh, permeate water going into a bucket there and the pay no attention to that hose out there. That's just an extra one. And the, uh, the RO, um, uh, the junk side of the RO that's gonna put out your sap uh, is going right into this, uh, this big pot here. You can see that's all the, all the flow you get, uh, but we're going from about 2.5% sugar up over 7% sugar uh, into there. After it's run through the RO here, we figured I believe, I, I had stats in the original video, I think it was like a 62% decrease uh, in water uh, with one pass, one pass through the RO. So a couple of these upgrades that we've made here. This is the first one here. And uh, we got our sap bucket there, we back that up. And then I just, I put the buckets here. And then this is just really kind of a back saver. And uh, we got this little aquarium pump. I'll try and get a shot here of that tag. Uh, I don't know, 15 bucks or something on Amazon, 160 gallons per hour, I think it is. But this thing, this little thing is just perfect, right? I mean, you can suction cup it to the bottom of the bucket. I can move it from bucket to bucket. And if you're running the RO system, you already have electric out here close by, right? And so I just put this thing on a switch, switch it on. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pump, we got this zip tied here, and we're gonna pump up into this bucket here and that bucket is elevated up above your pump and this kind of gets into one of the um, questions that I've had is people will say well it's just not really pulling through like it should or it's not flowing or whatever elevate your bucket get your bucket up above your pump there and uh, that'll help greatly but uh, I wanted to show you too a really simple fix that we did here on like a pre-filter try to do this without spilling you know what let me just shut the shut the pump off there we go and then this thing here is uh, for beekeeping and this is a I'll get you a shot here 200 micron filter and it's for a five gallon bucket in beekeeping and this is just perfect so you're of course you guys know your pre-filter there before you get to your RO that's a five micron I believe and so this 200 micron it's not it's not gonna give you as much filtration as that pre-filter down there but man it sure pulls out uh just a bunch of a bunch of crud let's kick this back on here just a very cheap uh simple solution here to kind of a pre-filter and then when you guys when you get to the end and you're using your permeate water to rinse everything out then just pull this filter out and you can flip it around and just rinse it off with your with your clean permeate water right and uh it, it works great really pulls out 
a lot of that crud. You know, with your sap, anybody doing this knows, you know, you get ants and insects, especially towards the end of the season. You get all kinds of bark and crud, no matter how, how hard you try to keep that sap clean, it's going to get stuff in it. And so this uh, 200 micron five gallon bucket filter really works well. I keep this lid on here when we're boiling. It's got a hole in it to let everything drain. And then you can kind of, you can kind of look at the level too, right? You can see that in the bucket. You know, you can, you can tell uh, when you need to shut this off and on. I suppose an even better upgrade, uh, some of you guys that are smarter than we are, uh, guys and gals there can probably rig up a float or even a pressure switch. I don't know. I mean, this whole, this thing here, you really don't need it. You can lift buckets. You know, that's what we do. We've done in previous years. But after about 500 gallons, four or 500 gallons of sap, uh, you know, a little bit of a shoulder uh, backache there. So it just saves you, right? We can, we can bring our sap in, set it right here, and then just that pump is going to do the heavy lifting. And then it runs everything through the RO, and that, that pump on the RO is going to put it up in here. And then we're going to drain, you know, from here. Here's our, our valve coming in. And so, you know, what we're trying to do there is just match... The, the flow coming in with the, the evaporation rate. I would say on this RO, we're doing about 10, 10 gallons of water. We pull out an hour on this RO. And then when we really get this evaporator going, we're doing another 10 an hour there. So potentially, you know, 20, 20 gallons an hour. Um, you know, that's enough for us with, you know, under 50 taps here. Okay, one other thing that we've done differently this year um, is we've used a separate sap and a separate permeate clean water uh, five micron filter there. So I just keep two Ziploc bags out here, okay? And I label one sap and one clean water. And when I'm done at the end of the day, then right now I'm running sap through here. So I've got my sap, my sap pre-filter in there. I'll pull that out when I'm done, put that in a Ziploc bag, seal it for next time. And I'll put my clean water permeate filter back in. I just think, you know, that just cleans your RO system better at the end of the day you know we're running you know five to ten gallons of permeate water back through this thing after we do our sap just to clean the filters and uh, i do take this thing in at night you know we don't really have a a sugar shack it's just a three-sided barn so i don't want the membranes i don't want any of this freezing right so that that was one of the things with this build i wanted to be able to disconnect the hoses take it in at night you know keep this thing in the mud room keep it from freezing. But I think having a different filter for sap and a different pre-filter for uh, clean permeate water, I think that has helped a lot and uh, even extended the life of uh, the, the actual filters. So you're using less of those. Okay, I've had a bunch of questions on this needle valve here. Guys, I I'm gonna tell you what, um, uh, th this thing here, I, I just, I cannot get this figured out. And I'm hopeful, you know, one of the values to the channel here, I think is that we've got just amazing awesome people out there so i'm hoping somebody else will have an idea that that works but i cannot get this needle valve and you guys have asked about this how do you get this thing to stop leaking i have no idea i even ordered i've ordered other valves in here okay this is uh of an actual ro uh valve i thought well you know maybe if i we get away from those uh the, the brass ferrule uh nuts or whatever those are they're such a pain to deal with I thought, you know, let's just upgrade to a regular RO valve and fitting. Uh, you know what? Out of the out of the top there, uh, it, this thing leaked even worse. It, it leaked even worse than than what this thing is is dripping here. Um, I'd say I, I keep this container under here, and every few hours I'll have you know half an inch in the bottom that I, I just now this is good. This is good after RO, you know, filtered. This is your seven percent, so it's valuable. So you want to try and. And collect that you don't want to drain it out on the ground uh i i don't know guys i don't know what else to do uh, uh something else to use in place of this needle valve if you have ideas weigh in on the comments and help people out i do have a couple other leaks you can see here on the hoses it's nothing major okay this next upgrade here is a really small one really simple but man it is so useful it's these these little clips here these are like office office clips but this quarter inch line, you can just clip that right to the bucket and, uh, you know, just run your hose right through and it, it keeps the hose in place, especially when you got a windy day. And then we, we put a larger, uh, a larger clip up here uh, in this pot. I got one side down 
and uh, we just ran this hose uh, right through here, right? And uh, it just holds that, that RO line in here. And then your lid, your lid fits on nicely. Uh, this is a 25 gallon uh, stock pot uh, that we've had for years and years and years. It's elevated. I got uh, a, a flue pipe coming out here, out the back and the concrete block around it, right? And so you've got all that heat from that flue pipe coming up and hitting this thing. It's a little bit of a pre-warmer is kind of the idea there. And then again, you're matching up that, matching up that flow rate uh, on the incoming sap to your evaporation rate. Uh, so you're not going too low or uh, too high and killing your boil there. I need to throw some more wood on this. I'll tell you, you get everything going here and there's really a lot to manage, right? I mean, you got your, your, I can see now I'm getting down, see the level there getting down. So I need to pump some more sap up uh, and, and, you know, manage, you know, mess with that. I need to get the fire going again. Uh, you know, even just doing a little couple minute video here has me, has me behind. But uh, it's one of the other big, big, big questions is how do you store your RO filters? I've had people asking me that since we built this thing. Guys, I had a massive fail on this. I, I tried to run water through these. I, I told myself I'd do it regularly, you know, to, to preserve those, prolong them throughout the, the, the off season. Well, I didn't do it. They sat in the basement and uh, I got them back out to use them and they just had a, just a, a, a nasty smell to them. Uh, so I did end up order, ordering new ones for this year, but I noticed the new ones came and they were vacuum packed. And so what I'm gonna do, we have a food saver uh, vacuum pack machine uh, that we use to for some of our uh, meats and such around the farm and so I actually at the end of the season I'm gonna clean those really well just run the permeate water through them and then I am going to take each one individually and vacuum seal it I'm, I'm not I'm not going to dry it first I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it you know I'm not gonna leave a, a water in it but but I'm gonna pull that membrane out and just vacuum seal each one and then I'll do another follow-up video right next year and, and tell you if uh, if it worked. Uh, I'll store those uh, store those away in uh, the basement somewhere, and we'll see we'll see how we do uh, limiting that uh, the the air uh, that uh, gets to those with that vacuum sealer. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to mention here is an upgrade on this fitting here coming out of this five-gallon bucket. You guys may know, you know, last year we had this like. Yeah, it was a fitting for the end of a garden hose, you know, and it, it went on this and it kind of, it draped inside of the bucket and it was all the time just, you know, moving around. It was just a real pain to deal with. And so I thought, you know what, I wonder if we could just go through that bucket with a fitting here. Um, the fitting was pretty easy to find. That was online. I'll, I'll try and link that. Uh, it is just a half inch uh, PVC on the inside. That fitting that went through the bucket had a male uh, fitting on it, uh, and then that connected to a female threaded uh, PVC there on the other side there. And then I went to the hardware and got a couple of gaskets, right? I've got, I've got one gasket on the inside, one gasket on the outside, uh, and that seemed to just tighten it down and that seemed to work well, but you've got that quarter inch fitting there is really the advantage, right? And so, you know, just, I can move this around. You're not having to horse around with something hanging in and out of the bucket all the time. And uh, that's, that's been great there. I'll see if I can link to that fitting on, I think I just got that off Amazon. So thanks for watching today, guys. Thanks for following along. Uh, I hope this uh, helps somebody out there uh, running this, uh, this RO setup here. Listen, uh, Love the comments section on the on the channel. I mean, you guys contribute uh, just as much uh, as anything that we're sharing here. And so uh, if you have ideas on uh, improving that needle valve or how we can uh, effectively store these RO membranes, you know, chime in here in the comments section, uh, help folks out and uh, share ideas. But uh, anyhow, this is what we're doing. Uh, those are a few of the upgrades we've made and uh, it has really worked out uh, well for us uh, with our, our maple syrup. So happy uh, sugaring uh, season uh, to you here, and we'll talk to you next time. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Be blessed.